And that is the effect that you can get with Volume Shaper that you just simply can't replicate with stock plugins in Ableton. What up everybody, this is Bastion. I'm back by popular demand for a little tutorial on how to achieve the cleanest possible side chaining using Cable Guy's Volume Shaper 6. I used Compressor for the first few years that I was making music, but then on a Gravitas Create production stream with David Starfire, I saw that he was using Volume Shaper and watching how he used it just sold me on it immediately. So I went and bought it and was all excited to get into it, but I couldn't find any good tutorials. Let me be clear, there are definitely tutorials on YouTube for Volume Shaper, but none of them are any good. They're either old, outdated, not doing it the best way possible, not very funny, bad lighting. So here we are. Now I'm going to walk you through how to set up Volume Shaper for sidechaining both your snare and your kick. And I'll show you guys a really neat trick for how to test whether or not your sidechain compression is actually synced up with your beat as tightly as possible. Your transients will thank me later. So first of all, what's the difference between Volume Shaper and Ableton Compressor? The main difference is that Volume Shaper is triggered by MIDI instead of audio. So why use Volume Shaper for sidechaining instead of Ableton Compressor? One, it just sounds cleaner. The other thing that makes it just better for side chaining, especially for an artist like myself, are these frequency bands. This allows me to duck only a targeted frequency range from the sound that's side chained to the kick or the snare. So if I only select the low end, that means that the kick is only going to be ducking the low frequencies. And this is the main thing that sold me on Volume Shaper, because my music is fairly cinematic, melodic, so even though I want my drums to be punchy and have presence, I don't necessarily want them to duck the entire mix whenever they hit. So let's jump in and set up the side chain for the snare. I covered this pretty extensively in my Ableton template tutorial. Go check that out. But the basic idea is that I have two main buses, one drum bus and another side chain bus for everything that's going to get side chained to the kick and the snare. First, we're going to pull up ShaperBox 2, which is the plugin that Volume Shaper lives inside of. Let's set MIDI trigger to on one shot. On would start the LFO and it would just keep going and going and going, whereas one shot, it just completes one cycle and then it stops. Under LFO mode, beat is definitely the easiest way to do it. Hertz mode will allow you to really fine tune the speed of your envelope. As you can see, as I adjust the speed, it's also adjusting the timing on the graph down here. And I'm pretty sure you could map this to a macro, but we're just going to go with beat. It's definitely the easiest, simplest way to do it. Here's where you can set the length, and this is going to really affect the timing of the envelope. For now, I'm just going to leave it on half a bar. Now let's draw our envelope. They've got these presets down here. Uh, I don't particularly like them, but it can be a good starting off point. This S-curve is pretty handy if you click and hold it, and then you drag this all the way down to the corner. But if you want to draw it yourself, just go ahead and control click to add a hard point and then in double click to add a soft point. So I'm gonna add a couple soft points so I can finesse this envelope and then I'm gonna add a couple hard points to make sure that the volume returns to maximum after this is completed. You've got your mix percentage, dry wet up here. This one down here controls the master mix for all of these plugins within ShaperBox, but it's not gonna matter if you're just using this for one plugin. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this, and now we have two instances of ShaperBox, one for the kick, one for the snare. Now let's make a couple MIDI trigger tracks for both our kick and our snare, and then set the output to your sidechain bus. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you've selected the correct instance of ShaperBox. Now we're gonna lay down some MIDI that lines up with our snare, and I'm just gonna put a note on C3, and I'm gonna loop it. So once we have our MIDI routing all set up, we can go back into Volume Shaper and make sure it's working. Yep, definitely working. Um, you can see this bar drop whenever it triggers the side chain, and also this little MIDI trigger light's gonna pop up. So it's obviously way too aggressive right now. So I'm actually gonna put the length down to a quarter beat. Now you can hear it's twice as fast. And you know, you can go ahead and make adjustments just based on how it sounds to you. Many artists recommend that you actually add a little bit of attack, even just uh, like two or three milliseconds. And by the way, when you start adjusting your attack here, you can see down here these values pop up. Uh, so as I pull this attack slower, you can see now it's got a 20 millisecond attack. 
I make it faster, it's down to zero, basically. So to be totally honest, I actually don't hear any artifacts, even when I have this on the fastest possible attack. And I mean, you can test this just by turning off your drums and listening. But let's just assume that these really experienced artists and other people know what they're talking about. So I'm going to add a little bit of attack to this. I'm just going to leave it on 2.3 basically milliseconds, which is still like super, super fast. Now let's go ahead and use resampling to test how tightly synced our side chaining really is. So you're going to want to add an audio track, set the input to resampling, turn off your drum bus so we're not going to hear the drums, but this MIDI is still going to be routed to volume shaper. So here's what we get. Using resampling like this means you don't just have to rely on your ears. And this allows you to go back, make fine-tune adjustments, and actually see the results. So for example, this is too much silence. The song is not even at full volume after the sidechain is completely done. But I'm actually going to tighten this up a little bit. And now let's see what kind of effect that had. Now, the music starts coming back and is at full volume pretty much by the time that the snare is over. Um, let's see how that sounds. Definitely punchy. Now, really quick, uh, with the kicks, I purposefully set this up in a drum rack. I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste uh, the MIDI. Then we're basically going to be all set up. I'm going to pull up the shaper box for the kicks. Make sure the output is set to the sidechain bus, and it's going to be the first shaper box. And now, let's see if it's working. Yep, so yeah, that's super punchy. I'm going to go ahead and dial this back to uh, one-fourth grid again. Yeah, so those drums are really punching through now. And we can go ahead and do another resample test if we want to make sure. Yep, so similar situation where a couple milliseconds pushing this forward might help. And now you've got your kicks and snares sidechained pretty much as clean as they can possibly be. Let's go ahead and do a little before and after. So here it is without the sidechain. And with. It's obviously quite aggressive, but if I were going to mix this track personally, I would probably come in here and only duck the low end with the kick to around 330 or so and then for the snare I would probably avoid ducking the sub and I would even probably avoid ducking the super highs just because I kind of like my hats and like high end stuff to kind of come through sometimes I'll duck the whole thing if I really want a, a punchy snare but now let's listen yeah so to me that just sounds so much more natural. Uh, the kick is punching through the low end, but it's not ducking all the highs, all the melodic content. The snare is still super punching, cutting through most of the mix. Yeah, I think that sounds a lot nicer. And that is the effect that you can get with Volume Shaper that you just simply can't replicate with stock plugins in Ableton. All right, last thing I'm going to mention is that if you come up with an envelope you really like, you can save it right here as a preset. Then it'll tell you it's been saved to your library. And in the future, um, you can go in here, you just click the name. Up in Packs, you would go to My Presets, and boom, there they are. You can also save envelopes to these little boxes, but those are only going to stay in this instance of Volume Shaper. Also, just worth mentioning that um, you can actually go in and try other people's presets that people have sort of saved to the cloud. Um, pretty cool feature. I personally don't use it, but um, I would love to see other plugins do this. Like, I would love it if you could share, like, Serum presets, uh, you know, over the cloud. Can someone tell Steve Duda to get on that? There are other features to this plugin, like this compressor that I just never use. And there are definitely other use cases for Volume Shaper. You can use it to edit drum loops, um, give them extra groove, or even like remove transients that you don't want in there. I think the puppet guy had a tutorial on this. You know the one I'm talking about.
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Check out links to my music below. Like and subscribe, all that jazz. And uh, yeah, please just let me know in the comments if you want me to do a tutorial on anything else in particular. Otherwise, follow me on Twitter. I'll definitely announce next time I'm doing one. Fashion out.